Today I wanted to talk about one of the apps in our App Center, which is called OwnCloud. And it's exactly that. It's your own cloud um, to share and manage your files if you need them. Um, so today I'm going to talk you through um, how to set it up on a QNAP and just a basic demo of how it works. Um, here's some information on the pricing. Effectively, if you're using it for your personal use, it is completely free with the Community Edition. Um, there are some paid options that you can go with, Standard or Enterprise, which is a amount per user per month. Um, so there's different uh, comparisons up on their website as to which you need. Um, for the one I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you installing it on the QNAP uh, quickly, just so you can see how it works um, and what to do. And uh, you can decide if you need to use it from there. So the first step I'm going to do, uh, the NAS I'm using today is the TVS-H1288X. Uh, I'm going to go to the App Center and just expand that out. Um, I don't have it installed right now. Um, one prerequisite of it is that you do have to have Container Station already installed. If you don't, when you click Install on OwnCloud, it will install Container Station for you. Um, so you can go to the uh, All App View or you can just go to the Backup Slash Sync option um, and then OwnCloud is just there. Um, you just click Install. It asks you where you want to put it if you have multiple uh, pools. I'm just going to say the, uh, the first one there and click OK. Um, so the first step here is it's going to go off and download it. It will then uh, set up the container and install it and get it running. Uh, once it's installed, uh, you'll have an icon on your desktop that you can click, and that will launch into sort of a very easy setup wizard uh, for OwnCloud itself. Um, it doesn't take long. It, it really just involves picking a username and password for the admin account. Uh, once you've got that, uh, you can log in and create other other users for it if you want to, and you can create things like sharing links. You can access it via WebDAV. Uh, we do have another video on the channel about WebDAV if you need to know what that can be used for as well. Um, so yeah, we're just going to uh, let this install. It'll only take a couple of seconds. So once it's installed, we'll uh, we'll go through the, uh, the the opening up and setting up of it. Okay, there we go. It says OwnCloud X has been installed and is ready to use. So I'm just going to close the App Center. We can see we now have the icon for it on our desktop. Um, so when I click on it, it's going to open up a new browser window. So here we go. And it needs you to create an admin account. So for me, I'll just create Craig and I'll use a very strong password. There we go. A so-so password. And we'll click Finish. I'm not going to save that. Um, so here it's going to just quickly set that up and then it's going to ask me to actually log in with that uh, username and password that I just created. So we'll do that. Just a little pop up here telling you that they have um, different apps and things that you can use for your desktop, for uh, your mobile devices as well. And you can connect different things in there um, so we can close that out. So here's what you see. It's very much like a, a Dropbox style um, interface, but that you're hosting yourself. It's on your own NAS. Um, you control uh, how much space you're all allocating to it, things like that. Um, and you can um, open up things. So if you were to click on the PDF, you can open it, download it, and you can share these out if you want as well. Um, so here, if I go to the share option, um, I'm only accessing it on the LAN here, so I've not got public addresses set up for it. Um, but you can forward the port through. You can see at the top, the port is 4490. So you can forward this through your firewall if you want access to it externally. So here I'm going to click share. So it's saying, do I want to share with groups, remote users? I'm going to create a public link. So we'll do that. It wants to know what to call it. Do I want to set a password for it? I'm going to leave that alone. Okay. So now it's created a link. And over here, you've got options to copy it to clipboard, edit the link, social share it, or remove it. So if I copy it to clipboard and open up a new browser window, it's pasted in a link. Now this link has absolutely no bearing on the file that you shared. So if I go back again to the file, it's called owncloudmanual.pdf, which does not appear in the link that I've typed in. Um, so if I just push enter on that, you get an option here to download the manual. So it's very easy to use. You can add them to your own own cloud if you're sharing own clouds between multiple users. So you can access the file. If you no longer want that file to be shared, you can always come back here and delete that. There we go. Doesn't delete the file, just the share link. So now if I was to go back and paste that link and try to access it, it says file not found. So I've effectively completely removed the, the share access to that file. Um, so down here, you've got some basic settings that shows you how to access it via WebDAV. Again, we do have another video on the channel if you want to know what WebDAV is. Um, or you can come up to the top, click on the username, and you can create other multiple users, and you can access the full settings for the on-cloud setup here. 
Uh, so it's giving me a full view here. You can create different profiles for different users, set the different languages. Um, again, this is how you would download the, the apps and you can even run the wizard again if you wish as well. Um, storage, um, it's been managed by the administrator. So effectively it's managed by the QNAP itself. So it's as much storage as your QNAP has. Um, and different security options. We come down to the main storage section down here. You can add external storage to it as well. So if you want to, you can uh, tick that box and enable more. And then you've got some general settings. We're just getting some warnings here because we're accessing it over things like HTTP and it would recommend HTTPS instead. Um, so you can go through the settings and change these out if you want. So yeah, you can see a lot of options and you can even enable encryption. So you can turn on server side encryption as well. Um, there is um, a marketplace as well. So if you want to, you can go up here to the market and you can go through and have a look at some extra options and things they have. Oh, it looks like there's an update, so you can do the updates. So 0.2.5 to 0.4.0. So we'll click update, that should be quick. There we go, all done. So you can go through the different app bundles that there, that's there. You can enable two-factor authentication. That sounds like a good idea. Um, a few other options, calendars, uh, different things, PDF viewers. So you can launch PDFs directly in the interface without having to download the file. Um, so yeah, a lot of different options that you can add to OnCloud to customize it to uh, what you need. Uh, very easy to use. Um, so yeah, it's exactly like Dropbox, except um, there's no sort of ongoing fees if you're using it for personal use at least. Um, but yeah, this is OnCloud. Um, it's uh, free to install on the NAS. Again, just for personal use. If you do want to use it in a business application, please take a look at their pricing and licenses and uh, get what you need accordingly. Um, but yeah, that's OwnCloud. If anybody has any questions, please do let me know and uh, we'll get back to you as quick as possible. Thanks. Bye. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, then please do like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or you want to get in contact with Craig or any of the team, then we do have a dedicated YouTube email address and you can find us there on YouTube underscore UK at QNAP.com. So until next time, thanks for watching.